Hello Set Apart Saints, this is David and in this video I'm going to talk about the ceiling of the 144,000 in Revelation 7. Some people today who believe the futuristic explanations of the fulfillment of Revelation proclaim that they're part of the 144,000 special ones to be set apart and protected in the end times. But the context of Revelation 7 is in between the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments. In previous videos, I showed you how the seal judgments were about the pagan Roman Empire. In the first seal, the Roman Empire was conquering. In the second seal, there were bloody civil wars. In the third seal, there was economic strife. In the fourth seal, there was famine, pestilence, and widespread death. In the fifth seal, the martyr's blood cried out for vengeance against the Roman Empire. Part of that was fulfilled during the seal judgments, which point to the empire's decline. And the final judgment would come with the trumpet judgments, as army after army was sent against the pagan Roman Empire to lead to its fall. So in Revelation 7, 1 through 3, we see that it says, And after these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding, and let me just stop right there, the earth it's talking about is not the whole globe. That's not the word it's using. It's pointing to the Roman earth. So that's the context of the seal judgments is the Roman earth that John would have known about. So, picking up it says holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree and i saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living god and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth nor the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our god in their foreheads the earth and the sea and trees are pointing to what would be affected during the upcoming trumpet judgment Revelation 8, 7 to 8 says, The first angel sounded, so this is part of the first and second trumpet judgments, the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. So we see that the 144,000 were sealed before the trumpet judgments. And in the next video, I'll show you how the first trumpet judgment was fulfilled, and we'll see the symbolism. So by that, we understand that the sealing of the 144,000 happened in the latter part of the 4th century before the first trumpet judgment started in 395 AD. John saw a vision of the millions of saints who had been killed by the pagan Roman emperors during the 10 persecution periods, which started with Nero and it ended with Constantine. So Revelation 7, 9 says, And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindred and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with the right robes and palms in their hands. So it's talking about the saints that have been killed throughout the Roman Empire. Revelation 7, 13 to 14 says, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Thou knows, And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and have made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are the fifth seal martyrs who lived during the Smyrna church era, who were killed by the pagan Roman emperor. So let's match that up on the Revelation layers chart. If you've not printed it yet, I put a link to it in the description. You can stop the video, get that printed up. You're going to want to reference that in this video and in future videos. So you can see the synchronicity of the fulfillment of Revelation. So this is what the image looks like. I know you can't read it, but all I'm pointing to is I'll be describing these sections on the left. So on the bottom, the first layer is, is pointing to the Roman beast kingdom. So the Roman emperors, Roman popes, Jesuit superior generals, right? So it goes across in the timeline. Second layer is the seven churches of Revelation going across the timeline. Third layer is the seals, trumpets, and bowls going across the timeline. So we're going to focus on this left section, what took place during the Roman Empire. On the bottom layer, the first layer, on the left side, you see that the pagan Roman Empire, which is described in Revelation 12, is in power. And Revelation 12:11 says this about the saints who were killed by the Roman emperors, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So looking at the second layer, so above where we're at on the bottom left, you see the church eras, and you see the church era of Smyrna. And that's pointing to the saints that were killed by the Roman emperors, especially hard from 303 to 312 during the 10 days of the fifth seal. 
in Revelation 2, 10, which is about the church era of Smyrna, says, Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. So the there were ten persecution periods which spanned from Nero until Constantine ended them. But Messiah here is telling the Smyrna church saints that they would face especially hard tribulation during the tenth persecution period, which lasted ten years. So ten days equals the ten years from 303 to 312 A.D. So this is the time of tribulation the Messiah foretold, you know, about the church Smyrna saints in Revelation 7, 13 to 14, the ones that went through the time of great tribulation. Revelation 12 on the bottom left, you go up and you go up to the third level, you see the the seal judgments taking place. And you see on seal five, it's pointing to the Smyrna church martyrs, whose blood was symbolically crying out for vengeance against the pagan Roman Empire. So do you see how the layers of Revelation align? We have the Roman Empire, we have the church era of Smyrna, and the other two church eras that took place during this time. We have the seal judgments taking place. We have the fifth seal pointing to the martyrs of the Roman Empire. We see the synchronicity of prophecy fulfillment. So, and you know, the deaths of these saints is something we have to keep in mind in the end times. Being martyred is not defeat, it's victory for the kingdom. Messiah died the most painful death, which declared his great love for us. And so when we die, when we give up our life and we choose him, we won't deny him and we will stay true to the faith, that brings him honor. And so death is a victory against the enemy because we did not give in. Moving into Revelation 8, the first verse says, When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for a half an hour. So, you have the six seal judgments, the seventh seal, what it does, it leads, we got this time of silence, but then the seventh seal opens up the seven trumpet judgments. So we've got a little break in between the seal judgments and the coming trumpet judgments where there was silence. In the context of the historical fulfillment of the seals of Revelation, when Constantine gave the edict of Milan in 312, it gave liberty to the saints and there was peace for a little while. So after the 10 persecution periods, he ended that and there was peace for the saints and there was a reprieve. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people fell away from the faith, apostatized, joined with what became the Roman Catholic Church, and, you know, really fell away from the true faith of Scripture. But there was peace for the saints for a little while. So keeping in mind that Messiah foretold a time of peace between the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments, it's amazing that there's a Roman coin that was minted in 322 that had Constantine on the front, and on the back it says, Blessed Tranquility. You see, it's so amazing to me when I did research on Revelation that you see in the coins, the coins of Rome testify. And we saw that in the seal judgments and, and, and they testify to what's taken place. And right here, Messiah said there's going to be a time of peace in the Roman Empire. And there's Constantine saying what? Blessed tranquility. That is just so amazing to me. And there was relative peace for the saints in the Roman Empire from the time that Constantine took control until Emperor Theodosius I, who ruled from 378 to 395. While the Romans enjoyed a time of peace, the savage nations were amassing on the borders, awaiting their time to attack the mighty empire. The Goths revered Emperor Theodosius. So while he was alive, they didn't attack. But when he died in January 395, the empire was left to his weaker sons, and the time of peace ended. Trumpets in scripture can be used to signify war, and the seven trumpet judgments represent Yah, our Heavenly Father, pouring out his wrath on the Roman Empire via attacks from pagan barbarian people groups. The seven trumpets describe the judgment against the Roman Empire, and with the first trumpet, it was symbolized by a hailstorm. And we'll get to that in the next video. Just keep in mind it was symbolized by a hailstorm. The seven seals divided into seven trumpet judgments as the armies of the Goths, Vandals, Huns, Heruli, Saracens, and Turks were sent to invade and scourge the Roman territory, which led to its fall. The prayers of the saints who suffered persecution at the hands of the Roman Empire were collected and offered up to Yah, our Heavenly Father. The pagan Roman Empire had supposedly converted to Christianity and made it the official religion, so why was judgment still coming? Well, that's because Romanism which was created by Constantine and the Roman bishops, is a perversion of the true scriptural faith as it's based on the pagan worship of false gods, false gospel of works. They perverted the true faith and made man-made traditions. The truth about what they're worshiping is revealed by their rituals, their symbols, their proclamations. It has the veneer of the true faith, 
using the names of scripture, but it's the Babylonian mystery religion in disguise. And during the councils that they formed during the fourth century, primarily the true faith was adulterated and corrupted. Keeping in mind that the wording of the first trumpet judgment says that hail and fire were cast to the earth. Listen to these historical accounts of the pending war. So while the Roman empire enjoyed a time of tranquility, Edward Gibbon, who's the famous historian who wrote a six-volume set of the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, and he's not a believer, so he's not trying to prove fulfillment of prophecy, he documented that the barbarian armies gathered like a hailstorm waiting to attack the empire. So he's saying that there was a dark cloud which collected along the coast of the Baltic, which burst in thunder upon the banks of the upper Danube. So he said, what language is he using, right? Thunder. You know, we're pointing to hell, and we'll get to some more quotes about that. In 364, a Roman soldier and historian wrote this prophetic statement, which points to the pending trumpet judgments. At this time, it was as if the trumpets were sounding the signal for the battle throughout the Roman Empire. The most savage nations rose and poured across the nearest frontiers. So, once again, what are we seeing? I mean, I, it, you know, it kind of blows my mind some days that they use the same language as Messiah, but he's he's a Roman historian. He's not trying to prove prophecy fulfillment. He's just saying it's as if the trumpets were sounding. Well, what are the trumpet judgments? Army after army coming against the Roman Empire. And he's saying exactly that. They were given the signal of battle against the Roman Empire. In early European history, Hutton Webster noted, until his death, the Goths remained quiet. So during the time of peace, like Messiah said, they remained quiet. But it was only the lull before the storm. There's our language again of a storm coming against the Roman Empire. So Theodosius was a friend of the Goths. But when he died in 395, he left the defense of the Roman world to his weakling sons. In the same year, the Visigoths raised one of their young nobles named Alaric upon his shield and with joyful shouts acclaimed him as their king. The Visigoth leader despised the service of Rome. His people, he thought, would be masters, not servants. Alaric determined to lead them into the very heart of the empire where they might find fertile lands and settle once for all. In philosophy of history, Carl Wilhelm Friedrich Schlegel pointed to the time of relative peace. He said the Goths, moved by the representations of their prince, declared to Theodosius that as long as he lived, they wished to have no other king but himself. But the case was altered under the, his sons. And to defend themselves from this people, these princes knew no other expedient than to let loose on Italy these barbarians and, and to divert and point the storm of invasion towards that quarter. I don't know if he's a believer or not. I don't think he is. I think he's just a historian. And he's pointing to the storm. He's, to, he's pointing to a time of peace as long as Theodosius is alive. And he's pointing to a coming storm, which is the exact language that Messiah used. In the book, Paraphrase of the Revelation of St. John, according to E.B. Eliot, it says, The threatening tempest of barbarians, destined soon to obliterate all remaining traces of Roman greatness, was still repelled or suspended on the frontiers of the empire, and was only kept for a season from bursting upon it with destructive violence by the overruling hand of divine providence. The saints were sealed to protect them. So during this time of peace, the saints were still to protect them, and the pagan Roman Empire enjoyed a slight reprieve before the barbarian armies were sent to attack it, which led to the fall of the once mighty Roman Empire. So we can see that the narrative about the 144,000 in Revelation 7 is not about the end times. It took place in between the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments. We see the language, we see the fulfillment of the time of peace, of tranquility. We see that in the Roman Empire. We see how it was fulfilled. And then we see, you know, when that emperor was taken out, Theodosius was taken out, then that led trumpet judgment invasions against the Roman Empire. So we see the exact fulfillment. But, you know, that said, we should strive to be set apart in the end times for our Heavenly Father. So he protects us as the enemy makes war against us. We need to come out of man-made teachings which originated in Babylon and Rome. We need to return to the ancient path of scriptural truth so that we're a pure bride for Messiah when he returns. I hope that helps you see the fulfillment of the 144,000. Love y'all. Shalom.